Na 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 Ouch! Hello everyone, this is Lolly and welcome back to Hacktoberfest 2023. This is day 3 and I wanted to start off today's video by showcasing a bit of Arx Libertatis code and to show the general headache of a JavaScript developer trying to code in C++. So what better place to start off this little episode than in the gun game arena and what I have done so far is spawned in a short sword and I want to equip this programmatically to the player. I will remove the bone and what I will do is just keep the book open and call short sword 22equip on the player. Very good, the weapon is equipped to the player. Nothing special there. Let's try the same when the player's fists are visible. I don't know, is that holstered or what is the proper word? Whatever, I can open the console and I can try equipping a weapon again using the same command, shortso22, equip, player, enter. You can hear the same sound effect and seemingly everything went okay. And if I would to open the book now, then the player would put away his hands and you would see that everything is okay. Unless you want to hit with the fists and use your fists as a weapon. So it looks like we are in a state where the game thinks that you are not in combat mode while the animation still shows that you are in combat mode. And if I go back to opening the book, resulting in the player placing away his hands, then going back to the combat mode, then you will see that now we have the weapon correctly placed in the player's hand. If I would to do the same with the NPC, then that would behave correctly. So let me just go into Arx Libertatis and show you guys what is going on there and just have a general tour together to see if I can spot anything interesting there. As a JavaScript developer, I would expect a code similar to this. We would have an add event listener to whatever the main system is, in this case it's window, and then we would have a key press, which is the name of the event, and then anytime this would call our callback function, then we would get in the parameters an event object, which would contain some information that we could query, and based on that information we could branch off our code. In this case we could check whether the pressed key was F. Okay, let's see how this looks in C++. Since I don't know much in how native applications work, I'm usually just going with searching through the files. And this is how I came across this piece of code here. We have this action key definition, which couples together the F key and the enter key into the single use action key. And if you guys remember, this is the same that you see in the settings under the Customize Controls option. The default key is F, and the alternative Enter key is also set to you. And in the case of Crouch, you don't have a secondary button bound, you just have the X key pressed. Okay, and left mouse button seems to be bound to this Action action key. First of all, this is stored inside an array of action keys and it's called actions and if I scroll down then you will see that we have another actions variable which in this case stores string views or strings and it's interesting can, is this valid this seems illegal like having the same variables with different uh, different types oh it's const expression so it's going to get what well, what the hell is this Guys, sorry, I'm a JavaScript developer. This is way too much Christmas decoration on a single variable. This is the same thing that we saw there. It's in the same position, so it's mouse look. That's a bit sus to me. But then again, the other one, action combine, seems to be okay. If you search inside the code base and try to find anything related to this action, then that will result in a dead end, because what you need to do is go to the corresponding header file and keep an eye out for this controls cust use value for the controls action. Alright, if you do a search for this, 
then you would see that we only get five results. The first interesting one we actually want to do something with is this part where we... Uh, what? We are setting values to a mouse button variable. What is happening here? So you press the F or the Enter key and then the eerie mouse button variable gets set. That's a bit more sus than the previous thing. And then if you scroll down a bit, then you would see that, oh, wait, maybe you are not inside the game, but maybe in a menu. Hold up, reset, and then calculate stuff again. No. The interesting part is inside the header file of the previously mentioned input.cpp. And in this case, since we set the eerie mouse button with the value 2, then we need to look at the eerie mouse down 2 or mouse up 2 or whatever function we have ending in number 2. And the part that is interesting to us is inside the interface.cpp, when you press the button, which is regarded as a mouse press, then the started action on IO would store the whatever element you had the cursor flying over. Like, can we just use hover like normal developers? <coughs> okay, so let's see what started action on IO is. Okay, three results, that's good. And this piece of code here, if eerie mouse up to, meaning probably that the button was released, and then we compared our variable with this PIO, whatever that is, then we do a whole bunch of stuff like, I don't know what the type is, but we are finally working with something that is either a weapon dagger category or a one-handed, two-handed weapon or a bow, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, there was our previous code. But okay, what is PIO again? That's another new variable in our context. Who understands all of this code? So yeah, I think you guys probably understand why it is so difficult to put anything inside this game engine. You literally have to leave breadcrumbs behind you on the trail to just keep a track of where you came from and how did you end up in a certain location. Just look at how many files we have already open and we didn't even start actually looking into what the situation is here. So yeah, I will leave it there and I will continue today's show with creating a little mini-map. Alright guys, here is today's Frankenstein mod creation, fresh out of the oven, Pump That Chicken. It's a very useful utility mod where you can click on the chicken, but don't click it way too fast. Look at this. I have improved the chicken clicking algorithm. Can, can you stop chicken? Stop. Stop moving, please. Oh, for fuck's sake. Where, where is this guy going? Can you stop for a second? <laughs> what the fuck? Stop already. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. If you click slow enough, then you can pump up the chicken. But if you click it too fast, it will deflate. And he's on the run again. Careful now. Come on. Oh, there it is. Just look at the size. A pumped up chicken. All right, I think this is it from me for today. I think I have rambled enough for today. Grab the pump that chicken mod fresh out from this GitHub page. It's under my name and I will place the link to this into the description. Of course, it's naturally it is compatible with Fred's mod manager. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.